back again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any new news? No, just uh, I had a 12-hour treatment. pray for by then. Tonight, uh, the, the uh, reading that we look at is a reading that we know pretty well. It's King David, and it's King David doing what he ought not have been doing. And we'll look at that and see why does God make such a drastic change in us, and how does God make such a drastic change in us when he comes to us and gives us his Holy Spirit. So we'll look at that tonight. Our order of worship is uh, the order of evening prayer, all printed for you in your bulletin. And I apologize again, the bulletin has got big gaps right in the middle, and that is because our printer has this issue right now where right down through the middle of the page it won't print anything. So we have to space everything apart until the parts come, and then the printer hopefully will get rid of whatever issue it has. So I apologize for that. Our service is printed in the uh, bulletin. Please stand if you're able. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light.
Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The psalm for this evening, Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me, in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies, and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For I am your servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our hymn.
heaven, we thank you again for this day and the hope and the promise that we have that you have made us new. You have given us a heart that sees and hears your word and promises. Strengthen us now in that word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the word of the Lord from 2 Samuel, the text for this evening, chapter 11, the first 27 verses. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David and Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David arose from the couch and was walking on the roof of the king's house that he saw from a roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is not that Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she had been purifying herself from her uncleanness. Then she returned to her house, and the woman conceived. And she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When, David. when Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab was doing, and how the people were doing, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of, his, of the king's house, with all his servants of the Lord, and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Have you not come from a long journey? Why did, why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah dwell in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also and tomorrow. I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. And David invited him, and he ate in his presence and drank so that he made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on the couch with the servants of the Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter, he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him, that he may be struck down and die. And as Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant men. And then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab and some of the servants of David among the people. Among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting, and he instructed the messenger, When you have finished telling all the news about the fighting to the king, then if the king if the king's anger arises, and if he says to you, Why did you go so near the city to fight? Do you not know that they would shoot you from the wall? Who killed Abim Abimelech, the son of Jerushabeth? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone on him from the wall, so that he died in Thebes? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, The men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, and we drove them back to the entrance of the gate. Then the archer shot at your servants from the wall. Some of your king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus shall you say to Joab, do not let this matter displease you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it and encourage it. 
When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she lamented over her husband. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Dear saints, have you ever heard someone say, just follow your heart? It might be a decision and you, you're not sure which direction to go. And someone says, just follow your heart. You might have two equally important decisions to make and you're not sure what to do when somebody says, just follow your heart. And it sounds like great advice. Your heart certainly will take you in the right direction. Certainly will take you where you should be. But let's look at David and let's see what happens when David followed his heart. It's the spring of the year and David didn't go off to war. Some people think that, that maybe David was having that midlife crisis. He was old enough not to be real good on the battlefield, so he stayed at home. And as he's there that afternoon out on his porch, if you will, looking down at the houses below him, he sees Bathsheba. His heart begins to lead him astray. And David sent and inquired about the woman. Already there, the sin begins to grow. David's heart wanted to know about her. David wanted to know all about her and who she was and why she was alone. And one sin gives way to the other. So David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him. And he lay with her. David and Bathsheba now committed adultery. David not only has now this sin to deal with, but what about the messengers? What about all of those in his house that knew better that David now has involved in this scheme? He finds out the news. She's pregnant. He knows the baby is his. He tried everything in his power to get Uriah to go home and lay with his wife because then he could say, well, it's Uriah's baby. But Uriah was such an upright man that while the, his soldiers and his commander and the Ark of the Covenant were out in the fields, Uriah would not go home and lay with his wife. He slept out at the entrance of the king's palace. No matter what David tried, he couldn't get Uriah to do what he wanted. The deception wasn't working. So there again, from David's heart, he continued to plot evil. He devises the plan. He writes the letter. Send Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him that he may be struck down and die. And David knew very well the integrity of Uriah. In fact, he gives Uriah his own death sentence to carry back to his commander. And Uriah did. And Uriah did just as David wanted. He put him in the forefront. He pulled the rest of the troops back. And Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, was killed. It's all fine now. It can all be covered up. Nothing will be, no one will be the wiser as David thinks that following his heart, he has now gotten away with this. Listen to what James says about our heart. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Beginning to see, following our heart is not necessarily a good thing. <coughs> following our heart oftentimes gives place just like David. It conceives and it gives birth to sin. Our heart is not something worth following. Matthew writes this, Jesus says this, Matthew records it. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. 
Still want to follow your heart? Someone once said, I think it was Dr. Luther, that said that the heart, the unregenerate heart, the heart that has not been washed in the waters of baptism claimed by Christ is nothing more than an idol factory. Because it will generate idols that we will follow all the day. This last week I was at, or Tuesday, I was at Bethlehem in Rapid City and Pastor Jones was preaching. All of the pastors get together once a month and Pastor Jones was preaching and he said that when we worship idols, when we go after the idols of our heart, we become like the idols we worship. Now we know very well that idols are not alive. We know very well that idols have no ears to hear. We know very well that idols have no eyes to see. And when we worship idols, we become like them. Deaf to the hearing of God's word. Deaf to our conscience that says, you shall not. We become blind to the things that we are doing. Blind to the consequences. Blind to the sin that goes on when we follow our heart and we leave in our trail destruction and death and devastation. When we follow our own heart and the idols it produces, we cannot see the danger, the destruction, and the damage caused by our actions. Just look at David, King David, watching over all of Israel, and there is adultery and deception and murder and trying to cover everything up. David would probably have been just fine leaving everything go. Bathsheba was now his wife. The baby was his. No one would know the difference. It would all be fine. But God breaks our hearts of stone. God sent to David the prophet Nathan. Nathan tells the story of the man that had one sheep and the the landowner that had many sheep. And when the visitor came to the one, to the man who had many sheep, instead of taking one of his sheep to feed the lamb, he took the neighbor's lamb, the one lamb that he had, the lamb that was the household pet, if you will. He took that lamb and he killed it and he gave it to the visitor. And when David heard this, he was outraged. That man deserves to die. And here are the words from Nathan. Now, I don't remember a lot of Hebrew from school, but this stuck. Tahaish. Nathan standing there in front of David with his bony finger poking him in the, pre- in the chest saying, David, you're the man. And David was broken. It's like Nathan's bony finger poking right into David's heart of stone and breaking it by the law of God. David realized he was the one. He realized what he did. He realized following his own heart brought all of this damage, this destruction. And David is broken. See, that's what God does to our hearts of stone. He breaks them. He makes and kill, he kills our idols so that now we hear his word. We see his promises. And we live in repentance. Nathan preached to David, and David was broken, and he repented. And David wrote this. We know it as, the, as Psalm 51. The, here are parts of that psalm. For I know my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. A heart that now will follow, not its own desire, but the desire of God. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You would not be pleased with burnt offerings. 
The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. You see, God takes our heart, our broken, sinful heart, and changes it. And he changes it by making it his. He changes it by entering in and living into us and giving us his Holy Spirit. So now our heart desires the things that God desires. The prophet Ezekiel says this. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all of the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all of your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Ezekiel chapter 36. You see, our Lord breaks into our deadness and gives us a new heart. A heart of flesh, a heart that seeks after him, a heart that has ears to hear his promises given to you. That our Lord does not require sacrifices or we would bring them. He loves the fact that we recognize our brokenness. We recognize every time, like David, we follow our heart and it leads us where God does not want us to be. We recognize that and we repent and we come before our Father and ask for forgiveness and he freely and joyfully grants it to us for the sake of Jesus on the cross. He gives us a new heart, a heart that trusts in his promises no matter what our human nature thinks or feels, no matter what the world around us says. Our heart clings to the promises that God has given to us and rejoices in those promises. I will be with you always. You are his children, forgiven and free. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will give you peace. In fact, we have it right there on the door before we leave. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Thank goodness we don't follow our heart because it would lead certainly to death and destruction. But our Lord has broken into our deadness and given us a new heart. The heart of Jesus that looks to love God and love our neighbor, that looks to rejoice in the promises given to us, that trusts in the promises of God, repents and lives joyfully each day knowing that we are his children and he is our Savior. Follow your heart? No, not your old heart. But follow the heart that Christ has given you through the waters of baptism, a heart of faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the peace that passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand and sing the Magnificat. <coughs>
peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew, for Scott, for John, for Randy, our pastor in Christ, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church and for all people, let us pray to the Lord. For Donald, Christy, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they might be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present to await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For Ron and Colleen, for all of those struggling and suffering with heavy decisions, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing, grant us your grace to keep your commandments, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Please be seated. Well, good evening, dear saints. For all of you watching online, thank you for joining us. Just a couple of announcements, actually just one. Uh, we gather again Sunday in our regular times. Remember Sunday the 13th. That Sunday we will have one service at 10 o'clock. That we'll have, uh, we have confession of faith of a number of new believers. We have baptism. We'll celebrate Easter Sunday in a way that we didn't do when we were celebrating Easter as it came on the calendar. Uh, we have a, a meal afterwards. We have an afternoon of games for the kids. This is our rally day Sunday. We have a meet and greet with our new vicar, Dennis. 
So, and then an ice cream social after that. So you can come and make a day out of it. Bring your lawn chairs, bring whatever you need, and just stay and enjoy the day with us. Gather with us Sunday, 8 o'clock and 10.30, Bible study in between, and also services online. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.